Hey everybody, Hayward here, the Financial Filmmaker, bringing you a third video uh, of part of a Financial Filmmaker uh, Friday series. You know, just kind of sharing a, a concept, strategy, something you can go out and apply to your everyday life and career and business. Um, just a little nugget, so to speak. So, um, the third concept I want to talk about today is called the cash flow quadrant. The cash flow quadrant. And uh, I don't know if you've heard of the author Robert Kiyosaki. If you look him up, uh, he's been around a while. Oprah, uh, Oprah interviewed him back in the day. And basically, he is a real estate investor, entrepreneur, uh, multi-business owner. And uh, he basically had a story about having a rich dad and a poor dad. Um, basically, one that, you know, not necessarily literal to the name, but basically, he may, may have had one that you know, taught him early in life different things that it was kind of custom to, part of society. And then later in life, he uh, found a mentor, what he called his rich dad, someone that came from a different walk of life that opened up things in a totally different way. And this is part of the concept he taught him about 40-something years ago. And this concept is instilled in his book and still taught today. So how the cash flow quadrant works is that he talks about there are four ways people earn income. Four ways. All right? Not two. A lot of people think, well, it's legal or illegal, you know, <laughs> but there's actually four ways that he kind of, you know, pioneered in the uh, late 90s with this concept. And the first way you can earn income is as the wrong marker. First one is as an employee. Second one is as self-employed. Third one is a business owner. And fourth one, this is called an investor. Okay? Now, what, you know, it seems pretty obvious, but the breakdown is pretty interesting. So, the first quadrant most people fall into is employees. So, that's someone that has a job. And the income is based on the position not the person. It's based on the position, not the person. Okay, so a lot of times if you're working at a certain company, uh, once again, depending on the culture, this isn't everywhere, but a lot of times when you're paid just off of the position and it's not necessarily off of your efforts. I don't know if any of you guys had ever you know, had a job, summer job, internship, or even you know current career where you may have worked with a slacker. Maybe somebody that you know did you know half the work you did, but still was you know, given half the, you know, most of the credit or still got the same amount of praise or, you know, still got, pay, still got the same paycheck as you at the end of the day. You know, it's not always a great feeling, you know. So that's the first one, um, E. The second quadrant is, um, once again, this is employee. Oop. And the second one is what's called self-employed. Now, this is, once again, your run-of-the-mill, your dentist, doctor, lawyer, hairstylist, real estate agent, salesperson, and once again, um, there's no right or wrong to either side what we're going to go over. Now, self-employed is just someone that, once again, they, they own the job initially. So, once again, you have more control. You have flexibility. This is your Lyft, Uber driver. And uh, once again, there's no limit to your income as self-employed because you can work the hours you choose to. However, when you really, when someone maybe buys a small business or starts a 1099 home-based business or anything like that or driving, only problem is that your income is capped based on your efforts. So let's say if you want to go to, you know, you want to go take a vacation for two weeks, if you're not working, is there any income coming in? No, there's not. So the only problem here is that you're limited by your own efforts. So as soon as you stop working, money stops coming in. All right, so that's self-employed. Now, the third quadrant we have over here on the right is business, the business owner, okay? Now, a lot of people may ask, well, hey, well, what's, and I'm self-employed, I own a business. I'm, 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 I'm a business owner, I own a business. Well, yes and no. I mean, when it comes to this, what do you think the main difference is between self-employed and business owner? A lot of people are like, I'm not really sure, it's the same thing. Well, I say the difference is people. All right, when you have a business, you have a system, and basically a system of people, processes running for you. Just like how every company has human, human resources, HR. 
that means you have a system of people that are in place at certain, you know, talented people. A lot, a lot of times people that are more talented than you with certain skills. That's what business owners uh, are really good at, finding the right talented people for those positions. So, once again, if you left out for two weeks on vacation as a business owner, is your business still running without you? Yes, it is. And what Robert even also says is that uh, a successful business is a company where you can leave off for six months and come back and you actually uh, increase your sales, you know, increase your uh, profit bottom line. That's just through people, you know, working that system that you put in place. So the biggest disconnect is a lot of people say, well, I'm self-employed, I'm a business owner. Well, at the end of the day, if you were to stop working for two weeks or a month, when would the income stop? And if it's all based on your efforts down here and not any people that you're working, that you're working with, then you're not exactly business on yourself employed. Once again, there's no right or wrong. But the point is, is that, you know, he really broke down what the difference is. You know, this is someone that owns a system that has unlimited potential because, once again, they're not directly doing all the efforts, if that makes sense. Okay. Now, fourth quadrant we got here is investor. Please bear with me with my handwriting. An investor. All right. So this is someone that at this point, you know, uh, people that have done well, worked at maybe a company for a long time and started a business, they eventually at a point where their money is working for them. And they're going out and doing different ventures and, you know, pursuits and that sort of thing. So once again, their efforts are long past. And, you know, the money is just being invested in different things, different opportunities, business opportunities, and it's just working for them. So the biggest question that uh, Robert, uh, you know, proposed in this is that what side do you think everybody wants to be on? Once again, there's no right or wrong. But, you know, most people say, yeah, I want to be a business owner or investor. Right over here. Now, what side do you think most people end up on? This side. Uh, once again, there is there is no right or wrong. I mean, everybody everybody who, who wants to, you know, work with the company, honest work is honest work. And I'm never going to be someone up here that just says, oh, you got to quit your job, become an entrepreneur, and all that crap. A lot of that times, a lot of that is very detrimental because everyone's situation is different. You can, you know, work at a great company for years and just always have your little plan B, you know, side hustle or actually business, maybe a, a you know, a W, a 1099 uh, business, small home-based business on the side and still stick with your regular gig forever, you know, just because you never know if something might happen. In case it does, you have uh, actual side business on the side that can, you know, make additional income. So I'm never going to tell anybody, oh, you got to become a business owner, all that. A lot of that is, everyone's situation is different. It's not for everybody, but just keep in mind with this cash flow quadrant, this applies to everybody, whether you like it or not. So I uh, hope this concept was interesting. Once again, uh, the ESBI um, quadrant, the cash flow quadrant, has been around a while. I'll link the original source in the video notes. And I hope this video has been helpful. I'm going to be bringing more of these. And, uh, you know, hopefully going to be, you know, maybe updating a smart board, maybe a smart board program eventually. Once I get big time, we'll see what happens. But I hope this video, this concept was interesting, something you can apply. And if you have any other additional questions, feel free to like, comment, and share, reach out to me. And we can learn more about how this and other concepts can apply toward your daily life and helping you get to where you want to go one day. So I'm Hayward, the financial filmmaker. Um, this was another Financial Filmmaker Friday video series. The quality will get better. It's all about putting out progress over perfection. And uh, you'll be seeing more of these as they uh, improve and get uh, bigger. So we'll see you next time. Hayward, the financial filmmaker. See you.